CES 2026. Day three had a very different energy compared to the first two days. The big humanoid robots, the industrial AI, the heavy autonomy stuff had already made their statements earlier in the week. Day three shifted into something more subtle. This was the day where you start seeing how AI, sensors, batteries, and weird form factors actually slip into everyday objects. Some of it felt practical. Some of it felt strange. Some of it felt like early category testing. But across the board, this was the day where CES really leaned into experimentation that could realistically ship. One of the weirdest products to get real attention was something called Lollipop Star. On the surface, it sounds like a joke. It's literally a lollipop that plays music while you eat it. But the way it works is actually interesting. The candy uses bone conduction, meaning sound vibrations travel through your teeth and jaw instead of through your ears. As you bite down, the vibrations move through your skull and your inner ear picks it up as sound. Each flavor is paired with specific music and the companies involved even license tracks for different versions. Technically, it's simple, but it shows how bone conduction keeps creeping into unexpected places. It's cheap, it's playful, and it's very CES, but it also demonstrates how sensory tech keeps finding new surfaces. Health tech also had a strong showing, and one of the more controversial examples was the Y brush. At first glance, it's just a fast toothbrush. You bite down and it cleans all your teeth in about 20 seconds. But the real angle is breath analysis. The brush includes sensors positioned near the nasal cavity that analyze compounds in your breath. Those compounds correlate with markers related to gum disease, metabolic issues, and other health signals. The company was careful about how they framed it. This isn't diagnosis, it's pattern detection. The idea is to flag changes over time that might be worth paying attention to. From a technical standpoint, Breath analysis has been around for years in labs. Seeing it integrated into a consumer toothbrush is a sign of how sensors are shrinking and becoming cheap enough to embed anywhere. Mental health and stress management showed up in a very CES way with a product called Thodian from Touchpoint Solution. These are small clip-on devices worn on opposite sides of the body. They vibrate in alternating patterns when triggered by stress signals. The system can work standalone, but it becomes more powerful when paired with a wearable like an Apple Watch or Fitbit. If your heart rate spikes or your metrics suggest elevated stress, the devices activate automatically. The vibration pattern is based on something called Bilateral Alternating Stimulation Tactile Feedback, or BLAST. This type of stimulation has been studied in therapy settings for calming the nervous system. The interesting part is how this bridges clinical techniques into consumer hardware, even if the price is still high for what looks like a simple device. Wearable biometrics continued with Ring Con's third generation smart ring. This one made waves because it adds blood pressure monitoring. That's rare in rings because blood pressure measurement usually requires calibration and stable positioning. Ring Con handles this by measuring blood pressure during sleep and requiring initial calibration with a traditional cuff. From a health perspective, Nighttime blood pressure trends can actually be more predictive than daytime readings. The fact that this works inside a ring form factor shows how far optical sensors and signal processing have come. Dexcom also showed updates, though not hardware this time. The company focused on software improvements to its Stello continuous glucose monitoring platform. The app redesign emphasizes AI-driven insights rather than raw data. Instead of just showing graphs, it highlights trends, patterns, and correlations with food and activity. Dexcom also leaned into integrations, especially with platforms like Aura. That layered view of glucose, sleep, and activity is becoming a recurring theme across health tech. Day three also leaned heavily into tools for work, creators, and productivity. One standout was Magic Screen from a startup called Intricate. This is a snap-on touchscreen layer for MacBooks. It attaches magnetically, aligns with the display, and connects via USB-C. Once attached, the Mac recognizes touch input and stylus input. You can tap, swipe, pinch, draw, and even use pressure-sensitive pen input. Latency during demos looked extremely low, almost on par with an iPad. The clever part is that the system preserves normal MacBook behavior, including sleep detection when the lid closes. It's a physical solution to something Apple has avoided for years and it works without deep OS modification. For creators, one of the most impressive technical demos came from a partnership between OWC and a company called Strata. Their system allows remote video editing directly from files stored on a distant machine without uploading them to the cloud. 
the files stay on local drives, but the editor can drag them straight into a timeline and start cutting immediately. Even over poor network connections, playback and scrubbing remain smooth. This relies on a patented virtual file access system that streams only what's needed in real time. For teams working across countries, this removes massive friction from collaboration and storage costs. Display tech stayed experimental but practical. Frymic introduced a voice-controlled e-ink art frame. You tap the frame, speak a prompt, and it generates an image using AI. The display uses e-ink Spectra 6, which allows full color without constant power draw. Battery life is measured in years, not hours. The frame supports different orientations, custom physical frames, and local uploads without apps. The voice-to-art pipeline combines speech-to-text and image generation, and the result looks more like printed art than a digital screen. It's one of those products that quietly changes how people might interact with AI-generated visuals at home. IKEA also returned with an updated version of its viral Varmblixt donut lamp. The new version adds color control, dimming, and remote operation. It transitions between hues smoothly instead of snapping, which matters more than it sounds in ambient lighting. IKEA continues to do something most tech companies struggle with embedding electronics into objects that still feel like furniture, not gadgets. Audio tech on day three leaned into unusual form factors. Biodynamic, a company known for studio gear, introduced the MMX300 Pro Gaming headset. The focus here was audio quality and durability rather than flashy features. Replaceable ear cups, replaceable rechargeable batteries, and a high quality microphone put it closer to professional gear than typical gaming accessories. The isolation was strong enough that many people thought active noise cancellation was running even though it wasn't. Another audio product that caught attention came from TDM. These headphones look standard at first, but they physically fold and twist into a portable speaker configuration. The drivers reposition, and the housing transforms into a speaker enclosure. It's mechanically complex, but it solves a real use case for people who want one device for personal listening and shared audio. Mobility and EV adjacent products also filled the floor. Navi showed the E-Wagon 4X, an electric powered cart designed to haul heavy gear while you ride. It uses a 3000 watt motor, a detachable 36 volt battery, and can carry over half a ton of payload. It's aimed at production crews, campers, and industrial use rather than casual consumers. Steering, braking, and stability were surprisingly refined for something that looks like a utility cart. Segway introduced the Mayon e-bike, a commuter-focused electric bike with integrated tracking, remote locking, and Apple Find My support. It features a rear hub motor, throttle assist, and a claimed range up to 80 miles depending on assist level. The subscription-based tracking model reflects where micro-mobility is heading, blending hardware sales with ongoing services. Strut showcased the EV1, a smart electric mobility chair that blends features of a wheelchair, scooter, and autonomous vehicle. It includes a full sensor suite with cameras and LiDAR for obstacle avoidance. Users can manually drive it or tap a location on a map and let it navigate autonomously. The system can also follow you while walking, which opens up interesting hybrid use cases. Payload capacity, speed, and modular transport were all designed for real-world use rather than concept demos. There was also plenty of CES-style absurdity, including rideable luggage from Jai Roar. It's exactly what it sounds like, a carry-on suitcase with handlebars and a motor that lets you ride it through terminals. Speed is limited, and airline restrictions remain a major issue, but the category keeps resurfacing every year, which says something about how people think about mobility in crowded spaces. Displays and projection rounded out the day. AWOL Vision demonstrated a new ultra-short throw laser projector designed to deliver large 4K images from just inches away. The focus was on replacing a traditional TV setup with a triple laser engine aimed at high brightness and strong color performance suitable for everyday living spaces. Support for modern HDR formats was highlighted, and the unit was positioned as a self-contained home theater system rather than a bare projector emphasizing integrated speakers and simplified setup over external components. Micro RGB TVs also continue to pop up across boots. This panel technology uses self-emissive red, green, and blue LEDs instead of backlights or color filters. The result is higher brightness, better color accuracy, and improved efficiency. Samsung, LG, and Hisense all push this hard, signaling that micro RGB is moving closer to mainstream adoption. Gaming AI stayed mostly software-focused on day three. 
NVIDIA demonstrated AI-powered teammates in PUBG that respond to voice commands, share tactical information, and act autonomously within the game world. The system combines speech recognition, natural language understanding, and in-game decision logic. NVIDIA also showed AI tutorial assistance inside strategy games like Total War, where the system reads the game state and explains mechanics dynamically. By the time Day 3 wrapped up, CES felt less like a spectacle and more like a lab. This was the day where categories blurred, toys had sensors, furniture had AI, health devices lived inside toothbrushes and rings, work tools quietly removed friction instead of demanding attention. None of this screamed for applause, but a lot of it felt like tech that could realistically show up in people's lives over the next year. That's the real takeaway from day three. If you made it this far, let me know which of these stood out to you the most. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.